Alright, it's about time I posted again on this channel. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. And today, we're going to be taking a look at this 2005 Mac Mini. Now, this is a G4 Mac Mini I bought off of eBay for too much. I shouldn't have spent as much as I did on this computer, but it doesn't really matter. It's going to be used for some cool stuff, I think. Uh, I'm going to try to run stuff like MorphOS and video editors and Linux on this machine and do a lot of testing. I have not tested the computer at all. It arrived yesterday, and I haven't, I haven't uh, plugged it in, played with it as of yet, because the power adapter didn't arrive until today. Uh, here's the power adapter I bought off of eBay. I don't know why it says FT, but it doesn't really matter. And I also need a couple of other adapters to connect it up to this monitor here. This random Dell monitor from 2016, I think. Alright, I finally found my DVI to VGA adapter. I just dropped it. <laughs> and so let's go ahead and plug this into the back of the Mac. Alright, the VGA cable is now plugged into the monitor. And I now I just need to plug this into here. And then set the monitor to VGA mode. So now to plug in the power supply. No magic smoke yet. The interesting thing about this connector is it looks exactly like a bigger version of USB-C. Just a little bigger. You can almost fit this inside. It does not have the same satisfying uh, plug-in as USB-C. And I just realized I also need a keyboard and a mouse. Who would have thought? I would need a keyboard and a mouse to run a computer. Here's my period accurate Apple keyboard. I've used this in other videos before. You know what? Screw it, whatever. I won't be plugging in a mouse to start with. Let's press down the power button. Got that startup sound. Didn't know this computer had a speaker. We heard the CD drive, I'd like, oh, I will be testing that thing out because it would be valuable if it still works. Alright, looks like we have an Apple logo now. I will be blurring out or blocking out the person's name on this computer because they did not wipe it. My plan is to go ahead and install this SSD into the computer. All right, found my mouse. It's a period accurate Apple mouse, as you can see. I'm just going to log in with the visitor account. It probably has no password. Does this machine have a fan? I'm not sure. I think it does. But I can't hear it. Oh, look at that. It has iLife installed. That's kind of nice. I'm not sure which version. I don't want it to connect to Wi-Fi right now. And there are files on the desktop. Looks like it's booting from a hard drive called 60 gigabyte. Let's go ahead to about this Mac. Looks like this is exactly what it, what the seller said. 1.42 gigahertz PowerPC G4, 256 megabytes of DDRSD RAM, and it's booting up from the 60 gigabyte internal hard drive, which I will be putting into another computer maybe. I looked through what was installed on the computer, and the only thing of interest was the box emulator. I wonder what this computer was used for. We're going to attempt to do some upgrades. Now I have RAM, but it has a heatsink on it and it might not work. Um, it also might be damaged. Uh, but I will be installing an SSD into this computer. Now these machines are not trivial to open. They require you to use a, a putty knife to, to pry off the bottom cover of these things. Um, you're pretty much guaranteed to like bend the plastic and somewhat damage the computer. It's impossible to do a repair without, without there being some sort of physical damage to the computer. So probably, I would say, Apple's uh, repair centers I then spent the next three minutes prying the case free with all matter of metal tools attempting to get the thing apart. I did end up scratching up the internal plastic, but it's in a place that no one will ever see unless they open up the computer, so I don't really care. 
finally got the case free. It looks like, yeah, there's absolutely no clearance for any sort of heat sink, so I'm probably not going to put the case back on until I get the RAM. Looks like I need to get some screws out. Three black Phillips head screws holding something and something in place. Okay. Damn, these are down lodged in here. I removed the three screws in the two antennas and then removed the top assembly from the Mac. Okay, I don't even need to unplug this, I think. Now it's time to get the SSD installed, I suppose. Now how do I get the hard drive out of here? I think I need to get the fan. So I actually do want to look up an iFixit guide. I don't want to iFix it up. I'm supposed to remove the three long Phillips head screws from here. These aren't particularly long. But I guess they're longer than any of the other screws. I think with this fan removed... Oh man, that's dusty. I need to get rid of the dust from that. There's a service hole. On the side of here. Let's grab a random other Phillips screwdriver I have. I think this is a service hole. Whatever. <laughs> I just voided the warranty. Oh no! Anyway Someone just subscribed to my channel. Alright, let's disconnect the this stuff and then slide out the hard drive enclosure. There we go. Hard drive's finally free. Looks like an Apple branded Seagate drive. 60 gigabytes or not. I thought it was 60. It's 80 gigabytes in size. Actually, the partition on the drive was 60. Now I'm going to go ahead and see this thing. This is the battery, it looks like. So I'm going to get a replacement battery at some point, but it looks to be a 2032. Or a 3 volt battery of some sort like that. 2032 is coming right up. The year of the button cell battery. Okay, it's a 2032. I think I have a 2032 somewhere. Now, fun fact, this uh, coin cell battery is actually an Apple part. It came out of an, uh, an AirTag. Let's put that in there. Actually, I'm not sure which side's positive and which side's negative. I hope I didn't break things. I think this side's positive. I hope I didn't break anything. Now it's time to get the SSD installed. Here's here's the box. It is a professional connector and cable and adapter. Very nice. And here is the SSD itself. This is just a random 128 gig SSD. Should work just fine because it's in an IDE adapter. All right, let's put this thing in here. Install the top case on top of the hard drive thing and put in the four screws or the six screws rather. I put the hard drive into the enclosure and then put the fan back in. Backwards. Yeah, this would cause some problems later on when I tried to close the computer, but I'm getting ahead of myself. I also tested out a random one gigabyte stick of DDR that I had that I assumed wouldn't fit due to the heatsink, however that RAM was faulty. So I waited another five days for the RAM I bought on eBay to arrive, and eventually it did. Alright, it has been a total of five days, two less than I expected actually, since I got this computer, and finally, the new RAM has arrived. This is just some random brand I found on eBay. Let's go ahead and take out the old RAM here, and then we're going to go ahead and put in the new RAM, as you can see right here. Click that into place. And now we need to put in the hard drive enclosure. And I'm not going to shut up the computer just yet. I'm going to first test to make sure everything's working because the RAM could still be faulty. So I'm going to go ahead and boot up the computer into Sorbet Leopard off of another Mac I have. I booted the keyboardless PowerBook G4 into target disk mode. It still has a working battery that lasts a few hours, I believe. So. I'm going to go ahead and boot this machine up. Well, first I have to get a monitor. All right, that did take a while, but everything's set up. It's it's a, it's a mess again, but we have the PowerBook running target disk mode to the Mac Mini. We have this period accurate Apple keyboard and this very period accurate Apple mouse. Wait, where's the Apple logo? Whatever. 
So now it's time to, first of all, set the monitor to actually use VGA. All right, here we are. Now let's go ahead and turn on the Mac. All right, we heard the startup sound. That means the RAM probably isn't faulty. All right, looks like we have the OS is showing up right here. We have Linux. Um, I'm not going to use Linux right now because there's no point in trying to boot PowerPC Linux on this machine right now. It's just time to go ahead and boot up from the Sorbet Leopard on this computer. Now that the PowerBook has an SSD, so it should be pretty fast booting this up. All right, we have an Apple logo. It's like we have a loading symbol. All right, this is just because Linux is installed on another partition, so you can ignore that. And I don't care about March 24th, 2001. Looks like the Wi-Fi networks are showing up, but we don't have an antenna plugged in, so they're not going to work very well. Mac OS 10, 10.5.9, 1.4 gigahertz PowerPC G4, and one gigabyte of SD RAM. So now, we're going to go ahead and take a look and see whether the original or the hard drive is actually in here. And make sure that it's all plugged in working correctly. Looks like everything's configured and working. 119.2 gigabyte, 128 gigabytes. But now that I've confirmed that everything's working, I should be able to just reassemble the computer. And hopefully everything doesn't break when I reassemble it. Uh, we got the Mac. Got the screws. And it's time to get this thing back together. And these cables are running a little bit awkwardly. And they might be causing problems. Because the machine might not be shutting properly. So we go ahead and plug the we go ahead and put this in. See, I'm pretty confident that these two little plastic things at the front should be shutting all the way, and they're not. So we need to go ahead and deal with that. I tried a variety of things, including removing the modem and rerouting the cables. However, nothing worked. Eventually I realized what the problem was, and that was the problem that I stated originally. And I just realized what I did wrong. It was a really stupid mistake on my end. Yeah, that, did, that didn't break, right? It didn't, okay. But, I installed the fan upside down, I think. Yeah, I definitely installed the fan upside down. <laughs> I, I'm glad I realized before I ran the computer with heavy load. I installed the fan upside down when I was going and removing it to remove the hard drive. Alright, that makes a whole lot more sense. Cable management now makes a whole lot more sense. Alright. Looks like everything is finally back in working condition. In, in like, correct I did, I did something correct, finally. Now, we can finally close the computer. Look, I know that I'm going to get yelled at in the comment section for it, like everything else, but is it really that big of a deal that the computer has one less screw? I mean, there's two screws in there already. It's not going to fall apart. I'm not transporting this computer long distances... Um, internationally. So, time to just snap this thing back together. There we go. Easy and simple. And the mini is back. Alright, <laughs> so now... We need to make sure everything still works, which means plugging FireWire and stuff back in. Plugging this back in. So now that's all done, it's finally time to plug in keyboard into the computer. 
Why does it keep doing this? Okay, if I do that, it's fine. Turn it on from back here. And here we are, we're back on the screen. We have the Grub Bootloader and Mac OS. I'm gonna boot into Mac OS in this case. We can ignore this. Let's go ahead and open up WebKit and attempt to load some websites. All right, so YouTube appears to start to load, but this computer is damn slow for running YouTube. So let's try something a little lighter like apple.com. All right, do we have internet? Is the internet just like dead on this thing? Yeah, we have internet, you know, perfectly fine internet. Oh, there we go. Looks like I can buy an Apple iPhone 13 Pro. Yeah, I don't think I'll be entering my credit card information on a computer like this. I also don't want an iPhone 13 Pro. I'm going to get an Android once my iPhone dies. Alright, I guess the internet's just not this computer's strong suit. Let's go to Macintosh Garden. Let's try Safari 6 instead of Safari 11. Alright, that loads the site just fine. Okay. Let's take another look at Disk Utility. And here it is. The Jedgems. I'm going to get an OS on here in the next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the future.